Boys and shine mothers and brothers and cheese wedges and handlebars and minoxidil beards all over the world rise and shine. Let it flow and let it grow. Or the other way around. Hey, real quick. Um, somebody was talking to me this morning via comments on YouTube about uh, full beard, natural beard, style beard, that type of thing. Uh, I would like to think that I have a natural beard. There's nothing natural about my beard. I've trimmed it six times. That's my biggest regret. My year, I have a year in the sense that I let it grow for a year, but I also trimmed it six times, which kind of irritates me because I'm impatient. That just, that's part of my, so many things about your personality come out. That's why I, that's why I throw down to you the yeared challenge. Man, grow a yeard. You're gonna discover so many things about yourself in the year of growing a beard. Patience, goals, persistence, overcoming objections. Think about this, overcoming objections, getting past complaints. If you're a salesman, you know what all this, all these terms mean. Um, in being influenced by strangers who don't know you and don't care about you, but all of a sudden are experts about you. Family members that disagree with you. People who knew you when you didn't have a beard. A million, there's gonna be a million things that you're gonna learn in your year. I challenge you to do a video series called Year of the Year or My Year. Make it something interesting. If you make that, if you start that YouTube channel, I will subscribe to it. I will comment on everything. I challenge you to do that. But I also want you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and forward it to people who you think would benefit from it. That's the biggest thing right now. But during your year, I will, the things that you learn, I learned how impatient I am. I started out thinking, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow a year. That's what I started out doing. And then I just kept trimming because I always I always wanted it to look nice and neat. Well, the whole nice and neat thing, number one, slowed it down. Just absolutely slowed it down. Some people say, how long did it take you to grow that beard? I said, a year. Well, I guess I'm now at what, about, I'm approaching, I'm approaching 14 months, but it was pretty big uh, at a year. I will tell you right now that part of my old nature of wanting to be groomed and be perfectly I was a suit and I was a suit and tie guy for for years. I was a a groomed guy with no hair out of place for years. I said goodbye to that. A year growing a beard for a year helped me be less compulsive about the way that I look. Did you hear me? Growing a yeard will help you be less compulsive about the way that you look. For those that are the groomers out there, those guys that just... And I was all, of course, being in acting and modeling for many years on TV, in print, in magazines, and all that kind of stuff. You're just always image conscious because you make your money with your image. So it's important that you just always remain quote unquote camera ready. Now I could give a hoot. So, and I would say that the agents are not knocking down my door hiring me. Uh, I guess if they want to hire, um, you know, a, a big white bearded guy, uh, you know, as a character, that would be one thing, but I'm certainly not going to be walking any runways or taking any leading man parts or be a primary character in a commercial. I don't think I am, unless it's a Santa Claus character, which I don't want to do Santa Claus. God bless all the Santa Claus guys. I'm just not into Santa Claus. I'll do wizard, warrior, Viking. I just, I won't do Santa Claus. But I love my Santa Claus dudes. I trim a lot of Santa Claus beards and shape them. So that's, and I know a lot of Santa Clauses personally, man. And I, I love the whole Santa culture. It's awesome. Anyways. During your year, you're going to learn so many things about yourself. Things that you didn't, you think you know yourself, you don't know jack until you grow a year. 
And when you grow a year, the stuff that comes out of you, the the apprehensions, the worries, the 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 little hurt. I'm hurt. Someone made fun of me. Someone said, "What? Did your razor? Is your razor broke? How many times have you heard that? Is your razor broke? Would you forget how to shave? Um, hey, Duck Dynasty. Hey, homeless. Uh, what are you trying to? Do? You know, it's like." You learn, actually it makes you, growing a year makes you a stronger person because you learn to ignore that. Because 99 people will say they love your beard, one person will say they don't like it. Or one person will say, I like it better when it was shorter. Or I like it better when you had just a goatee. And my God, that'll ruin your day. Growing a one year beard teaches you so much. It's amazing. So this is the year throwdown, man. I challenge you to start a channel and make a vid, make, I don't, you know, make a video once a week, once a month, forget it. Make videos whenever you want. Don't worry about cameras, lighting, don't worry about scripts. Just get on camera, on your phone. You have a production studio, it's called a phone. And make a video and upload the darn thing. Tag it properly, you'll be fine. I will subscribe. Let me know, and I'll subscribe to it, and I'll, and I'll even tell others about it. That's the beautiful thing. I ask you to, to subscribe, like, and forward. I will do the same thing with you. So just get on, get on. I was telling a guy yesterday, uh, who sat in my chair, who wants to be a YouTuber. Well done is well begun. Start moving. Do something. You can always tweak, modify, change, and adjust while you're in motion. Start uploading videos now. Now. Today. At least make a video and introduce yourself. Get a damn rubber band. Attach your phone to the rear view mirror of your car. Now I'm driving the Sultan XB today. So... I love this car. It's um, my videos are pretty stable. When I actually had a a unit to hold my phone on the dashboard, it was very shaky. I hated it, so I just used that high tech device called a rubber band and put it on the uh, put it on the rear view mirror, half of the rear view mirror, so I could still see my rear view mirror. And I'm constantly checking my mirrors. All right, the road's going to change here in just a minute. Pipe smokers, another uh, accidental group, I shouldn't say accidental, a non-intended audience. A lot of bearded guys happen to be pipe smokers, I have appealed to them. Cigar smokers, I, I have appealed to you as well. Uh, thank you for your loyal subscribership, and uh, I never intended to do pipe or cigar videos, but I've attracted that audience. Uh, enjoy a cigar, savor a pipe. Like my tobacconist, the guy that runs the tobacco store, cigar shop, where I occasionally go, I said, tell me about your customers. He said, cigarette smokers, all impulsive. They gotta have their nicotine. They don't wanna talk, they just wanna give me money quick, get their cigarettes and get out. Cigar guys, he said 50-50. 50% of them are good guys, 50% are assholes. I said, what about your pipe smokers? His exact words, and I quote, every one a gentleman. Now, isn't that something? Every one a gentleman. I like that. I fall into that category. I like that. I like to consider myself a, a gentleman. Uh, women who know me, if they were talking about me behind my back, they would say, he's a gentleman. I'm the guy that takes a woman's coat. When a woman enters the room, I stand up. And I'm actually gonna do a video about that, um, about how to be a gentleman. But we're gonna get into that at another time. The year challenge. I challenge you, not only for a beard. Now today my beard is just oiled. I'm gonna to get to work today. I'm gonna to bomb it and probably do a quick video. Um, I'm gonna be applying bomb, actually Northwoods Beard Company. And they have a very light colored balm for me that works so well. It's amazing. Um, the more yellower balms, 
for a white beard, you want to enhance the whiteness. What you don't want to do is, what's not attractive is a brassy white beard. When you see like a lot of guys who have white beards and there's like this amber brassiness around here, it's from smoking or coffee or food. And I hate that. On me anyways, I hate that. If you got a beard with a brassy mustache, more power to you, man, because all beards are beautiful, even gnarly beards, man, okay? Not everybody has to have such a like amazingly well-groomed beard and oiled and bomb. If you got a beard, hmm, more power to you, man. But here's the deal. Um, oil today, I'm gonna put on a nice light-colored balm. My beard looks exceptionally white today because I used a, uh, a lavender purple product. Uh, that enhances the white and minimizes any other colors. So uh, I make a purple beard balm for myself. I, I guess if there was demand, I would manufacture it and it's a proprietary formulation that helps white beards. All right, you got me with the year? That's my challenge, man. You will, you will love your, when I, when I'm laying in bed, I'm just like on my pillow and I feel the beard on my chest kind of going down my neck. It feels good when I roll over uh, while I'm in bed. It's, it just feels good. It feels, when I pick up my animals, they nudge their face, their little fake furry faces into my fur. And I don't know if it's like a, uh, if it's a, uh, instinctual animal thing, but they love nudging in my beard, and that's really kind of neat, and I like that. For those of you guys that have cats and dogs and other other animals, um, what is your experience with your, with your pets and your beard? Mine has been nothing but wonderful, and I know it's been a huge part of of how even my wild animals recognize me. They, they have a natural aversion um, to humans for, for self-preservation purposes. But it's almost like, like they're, they're, they're ready to scamper away. I'm talking about the wild animals that come into my backyard. The, the skunks, the raccoons, the possums, the foxes, the deer. It's almost like they hear the door the back door and they jolt and they're just ready to just disappear and then they see the guy with the white beard and then what happens is they just remain calm and they turn towards me and they start working their way towards me so I don't know if the hairy face uh, is something calming for them makes makes the human face less threatening I find that beards make people more approachable. I went to a, uh, a healthcare meeting, a political event uh, that had a couple hundred people in it, and there were all the major news organizations there, all of them, and many international, Australian, Irish, Indian, um, British, they were Everyone was, including all the major networks, and I did five interviews because people lined up. I don't know why. No one knows me, but people lined up to interview the man with the big white beard. I was in a black suit and a red tie. I was dressed like an attorney, but people wanted to hear what the guy with the big white beard had to say. It was interesting which kind of proves my theory about it proves my theory about when you go to a networking event this was not a networking event it was an informational forum when you go to a networking event people want to meet the guy with the big beard they want their picture taken with the guy with the big beard and remember when you go to an, when you have a big beard i will say this how you the way that you really want to dress it, for those of you that, that are like me that have like, like, um, eccentric propensity, in other words, you like dressing a little weird, even if it's not Halloween, 
<laughs> we put it that way, which I do. I could dress like 18, late 1800s Victorian every day. Um, that has become a thing called like steampunk without all the, the shit, the gear and all that stuff, but just more like 1800s Victorian all the way up to 1920s type of stuff. I enjoy that kind of dressing on a regular basis. Uh, I enjoy wearing vintage clothing and hats. And I'll tell you what, you don't get as many weird looks when you have a beard. You can pull it off, and you can pull it off well. Now, if you just wanna wear a camo hat and a vest and a real tree shirt, that looks okay too. That looks all right too. But grow a yeard. Please grow a yeard. That's my challenge. Let me know down below if you are up for the challenge. And mark it on your calendar. This is when I start my yeard. And start doing videos if you can. I'll, I will be your first subscriber. And happily so. Then I can break your balls. <laughs> Like you've broken mine, but that's all right. That's all. Right. It's all good, man. It's all good. I got an offer. It's funny. Uh, this past week, I got an offer to be a, a bouncer um, at a strip club. What the heck is that all about? I know a guy who's uh, who owns a club, and he wants me to be the doorman because he feels that I'm diplomatic, and. You know, and for other reasons. I mean, it, obviously, bouncers, it's better to reason with somebody than it is to have to bounce somebody out of a out of an establishment. So, apart from the strip club thing, uh, I'm honored that somebody thought that I would be a good ambassador slash, uh, what, what's the word, a... Um, someone who can reason with people. Now, it's, I say it's hard to reason with drunk people. It would be, it would be difficult, because that would be the only reason why you would eject somebody. But, uh, when you have Santa, Gandalf, or Grandpa asking you to calm down or respect patrons or the dancers, and, uh, you know, you might not be as crazy, so, uh, and he's had nothing but trouble with big intimidating guys who, who have been, uh, his, uh, been, been his bouncers, so, morally, that, you know, it, I'm, I'm slightly challenged morally with that, um, with that whole thing. Some people think it's disrespectful to women. I guess the women who are doing it aren't disrespectful. They don't feel disrespected. They're making money. Uh, his story was that they're all like moms. They're all working hard. Some of them, it's a part-time job. Some it's a full-time job. Some are working their way out of, you know, bad marriages or they don't want to go on government assistance or some are just making a killing and it's their career. That's a trip, ain't it? I mean, that. some of them are... Some of his girls are making about one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars cash. I wonder how much they claim on their taxes. That's interesting, right? What do you? I mean, what do you mark yourself down as, like an entertainer? I have no idea. So that was an interesting thing that happened this week. I was asked to be a bouncer at a strip club. You don't get asked that every day, do you? <laughs> I know I don't. Anyways, have a great day, guys. The yeard challenge is on for you. I'm doing a two-year. Um, I decided I'm going to go for two full years because I want to dagner out and braid my beard down to my belly. So, if you guys, you guys know uh, dagner pipes, right? I, for some reason, I like Jason Dagner's beard. I, um, I like the freedom. Uh, he might not call it freedom. I don't know. I've never talked to him. He's commented on my things a couple of times. And he seems like a nice guy. And uh, I'm all about people that support the military, number one. I'm all about people uh, that have self-discipline. I'm all about businesses. I'm all about entrepreneurs. And I will support entrepreneurs 
any day of the week. Any day of the week. Now, I know I have an international audience, so I always get a little bit, like, I'm always careful talking about American politics. I'm very proud to be American. I don't like war. I like peace. <laughs> Way better than war. And when I talk about the military, I know I have, uh, I have, uh, watchers, observers, subscribers, and fans that live in countries that the United States has uh, been at war or uh, have been involved in or affected by, and my heart goes out to you, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, and like in my Beards Without Borders videos, um, I really, I bid you peace, I wish you peace, no matter where you are, and it occurred to me after about two or three months of doing these videos that, um, that I have a really, uh, a strong international, uh, a very strong international audience, dude's not letting me get over, you gonna let me get over, man, come on, man, right, I have a very strong international audience that I appreciate. See what the collar just did to the beard, man. That's why you put on beard bomb. That. But then, that's my nonsense about having to be perfectly groomed at all times. Let it grow and let it flow. All right? And when it's long enough, it'll go past the collar. That's why you got to have patience, man. And just let that go down. Let it go to cascade down the front of your chest. That's important. Back to the international thing. Um, I want peace in this world. I want peace with people. I don't like arguing with people. Sometimes I just give a little snappy comeback or um, sometimes people rub you the wrong way. I'll do like a nice video and then I'll see like a thumbs down and then I want to give a finger, <laughs> a middle finger up, you know. Uh, but that's that's my stuff. That's, that's what, uh, those are things that I've had to learn to control, and uh, they are not bad lessons to learn. And as, as I've gotten older uh, and have less years to live on this earth, I think um, if I had everything to do all over again, number one, I'd never shave, ever. I would just never shave. Number two, I want to be at peace with people, even minoxidil beard people. Honestly, I'm not interested in, uh, I mean, I have my opinions. They are what they are. Your opinions are your opinions. They are what they are. I'm not going to change you. You're not going to change me. Um, but we can respect each other. And there's nothing wrong with that. All right, man. I bid you peace. I wish you well. Start the year challenge, man. Do it. I know you can because I believe in you. Now go out there and do it. Bam.